I'm pleased to welcome into the conversation the UK ambassador to the UK, Vadim Prestaiko. Uh, ambassador, very, uh, very good to have you on the program. Thank you for joining us. We should, of course, continue to mention that Russia says it doesn't plan to invade Ukraine. How do you respond when you hear those, those comments and you see the troop build up at the border? How do you respond to Russia on that front? Obviously, we don't believe what, Ru what Russians and Putin is saying, just not because he's on his own territory, which he is claiming. But the problem is that we are missing the point that he has been in Ukraine and was fighting with us for the last seven years. We're not going all the way in the history. But these seven years already costed us more than 13,000 people dead and 7% of the territory. So why would we believe him right now? Okay, and in terms of the Western response here, Ambassador, perhaps you can give us your insights into what is being discussed and what is being, what is being planned. Uh, other media outlets are reporting that the Biden administration is weighing sending thousands of troops to Eastern Europe and the Baltics. Uh, is that something you're aware of? Are you aware of conversations like that taking place? We are aware of these conversations. We understand that NATO is reinforcing its borders. That's very right for the family of this nation's united defensive bloc. The most important question for Ukrainians right now, which are observing that troops have been massing around their borders, is how Ukraine can be helped right now. And that the United States response from the, our Western partners, United States, UK, NATO at large, that's the support we have, first of all, political, then the economic support, and some of these nations uh, went as far as providing us with defensive weapons, for which we are very grateful right now at this particular moment. Do you need more uh, military support in terms of weapons, in terms of aircraft, in terms of uh, e even advising troops? Very unfortunate to say that we need more in more or less everything. Now, when we are covered with the anti-tank threat, the, the, the missiles and the everything on, on the ground, we still see the gaps in our air defense. We understand that Russians can come through the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov, where we lost the, our fleet when the Crimea was taken out from our hands. So this is somewhere we, we have to find out our collective response. And first of all, that's Ukrainians, what was important inside Ukraine, this unity of people to defend the old land, their own land. We need means to, to do so. What do you believe, Ambassador, that Vladimir Putin ultimately wants? I mean, do you think Russia's after a, a complete takeover of Ukraine, or do you think, as some have speculated, that he's just looking to, um, to, to occupy a corridor to Crimea? Unfortunately, that's everybody's guess. I mean, what, what he really needs, what, what is in his own head. Some people would argue that he's trying to reestablish the uh, g glorious Soviet Union, which is, by the way, this year is 100 years anniversary of formal formation of the Soviet Union. Some others will tell that he is trying to make us back and force us back to the table of negotiations on his terms in so-called Minsk negotiations. Someone will, as you just asked, they, the people will believe that he is trying to provide the land bridge to the Crimea and supply with the transportation, easy access, and the water. So there are many, many other things. I personally believe that Ukraine poses the threat, existential threat for Russia, not of our actions, but because we are existing independently and in the way we are trying to build our society, which is probably for his regime even worse than everything been, been numbered before. Ambassador, the UK alleged over the weekend that Moscow is, is plotting to install a pro-Russian leader in Kiev. Has that intelligence been shared with you? This intelligence, we knew, not everything, of course, because they each and, that's a very sensitive part when each and every nation, the intelligence they are doing. But what is, I mean, for us, for Ukrainians, it's not a big news that they are trying to, to establish the government which will be better for them. That's what they did with previous government. They paid three billion uh, euros just to you know, buy out their loyalty instead of signing the agreement with the European Union. And the whole government fled to Russia, Federation, our president, prime minister, many ministers. So the Russians will, sooner or later, they will use them. We understood it from the very beginning. And let's talk about what's going on in Ukraine. Obviously, the U.S. is now evacuating family members of diplomats in the embassy there. If the U.K. or other Western countries were to follow that lead, do you think that's appropriate at this time? 
Uh, you're actually very right, because the UK already followed the lead, and they announced that the inessential staff and the family members should be uh, brought back to UK. You know, from point of view of, of diplomacy, of somebody who was responsible of the diplomatic service of Ukraine myself, I understand this move, and I respect this move. People have to protect their own staff. But the message that's been sent to Ukrainians is very difficult, very tough ones. Ukrainians already on the brink on psychological breakdown because of this matter. And it's not just forces. The TV is bombarding us, the, 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 all the psychological operations Russians running against us. This is just yet another signal that, guys, the war is probably imminent. Do you ever think, Ambassador, that Ukraine will join NATO? Do you think perhaps the West might conclude that this would be just something a little too provocative uh, in a country that, that, that borders Russia? Is that something that, that concerns you? That's what I hear in many nations in, uh, in NATO. I understand that we are talking about right now when nations are in negotiations with Russians and they don't want to provoke, don't want to, you know, to the, the peace is very fragile at the moment. At the same time, my argument is when we're trying to, to tell Putin that we have, we have our own agenda, I mean us Ukrainians and the rest of the globe and NATO included, so we have to prove it by some actions. For example, in 2008, leaders promised that Ukraine will become a member of NATO. And they also told the ministers of foreign affairs to assess whether the Ukrainian, Ukraine is ready for the next step with the membership action plan. It's been many, many years since 2008. I believe there is assessment, this fair assessment is needed right now. So we tell Putin that you do whatever you want. We have our own agenda, and Ukraine is going as independent nations whenever they like. EU, NATO, you name it.